sometimes you want to know what is the capacity of a beam that you want to hang some weight from it. And just like this one or, or something you have in your barn. Okay, now we're going to come back and here uh, calculate the capacity of the beam, see how much uh, weight it can support. The beam cross section size was 4 by 16, but in reality, if you measure it, it's a 3.5 inch by 15.25, but they called 4 by 16. I thought it was a uh, pine wood, but it's not pine. It's a Douglas fir large. That's a type of species of wood. You know, we have oak, we have uh, birch, we have pine. You know, there's all kind of variety of them. And what we're going to do, we're going to use the uh, uh, code book. Let me bring it up here. The code we're going to use is uh, National Design Specification for Wood and Construction. And uh, uh, from there, we can get all the property for this uh, uh, timber that we have. So go ahead and let's get to work anyway. So the, in the S table 4.3.1, it says if you want to calculate the uh, a bending stress capacity of this beam, because the beam is right down the, the weight is down the middle, and that weight causes a, a, what we call bending moment. It bends the beam. And that bending moment can cause a bending stress, and we can tell you where it's going to break. And but the the, the uh, timber design uh, specification says, okay, for that type of uh, 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 wood, Douglas fir, we know the capacity. Uh, what is the capacity of it? However, because we don't know how you're going to use that timber, you have to adjust it. If it's going to be outside under the condition, then you have to multiply by some kind of factor. And if it's a uh, certain size, then you have changed the factor. And if it's uh, pressure treated, you can change a, a different, or if it's uh, rep repeated, the beam is repeated every 16 inches, then we're going to use a different type of uh, um, uh, adjustment factor. And this one is a CD, and CD is basically, is we will go through all these one by one. And how long are going to use the, uh, uh, um, uh, the timber for? It's a short duration or for a long duration, and then you can make that adjustment factor. Anyway, all right, so now we're going to go to table 4A. Let me bring that table up right here so you can see it. Uh, okay, so let's take a look at this table right here. We're going to go to table 4A, and the table 4A is for dimensional lumber. Our beam is a 4 by 16. It's not a timber. To become a timber has to be bigger than 5 inch, either 5 by 5, 6 by 6, or 6 by 8, or 5 by whatever, and that classifies as a timber. Because this is under 5 inches, the 4 by 16, it classifies as a dimensional lumber. So we go to this table, they have a, a, all type of a, a, a different species of wood. Uh, if you want to go to pine, southern pine, you go to table 4B. So here if I go down, I keep going down, down. And I can find Douglas Fair Large right here. And I'm looking for this number, all these numbers I wrote down across from here. And we said that our, uh, um, it came out to, our bending stress came out to be 1500 PSI, which we said it was a structural uh, select at the top of the line. And depending, you, you, when you have your beam, you got to find out what type it is. Normally, if it's bigger than, big size beam like then it's nice and clean you can see it's going to be a selected structural and that's why we use all these number came from i'm going to calculate all the adjustment factor and i put it on the board as i go along the uh, cd adjustment factor we're going to use one most of our factors are going to come out to become one so uh, this is the inside condition so cm is going to be equal one and ct for a temperature wise is going to be one and a size factor, it's going to be uh, uh, <coughs> also it's going to be one. If you look at the uh, table, and um, so most of our adjustment factor is going to come out to become one because this is the uh, beam is inside condition. It's factor because it's bigger than 14 inches. It's a 16, so that become one based on the table you can see on there. Repetition factor is equal one because there's no other one next to it, and so all that become one except for the CL, we will calculate CL in a minute. Going back to table uh, 4.31, uh, uh, 4 we're going to calculate the E prime uh, minimum, which is equal E time CM CT CI 
and uh, we already calculated all that, so it's going to come out to basically 690,000 PSI. Let's do some uh, dimensional property. We said the beam is 20 feet long and it's 10 and a half inches by 15.25. And with the beam that sits right on the block right here, I say if it sits right here and whatever it sits on, and this distance right here is like it's on a sitting on two by four. So let's say that's a two by four is uh, three and a half inch wide, and also the beam is three and a half inch wide, per fixed perfectly. So our W of the beam is three and a half uh, inches. And then we're going to calculate the area of here. The area is basically, you can pick that up from table 1B. If you go into table 1B, look at 4 by 16, it give you all those properties. So I'm going to just write it down here rather than uh, calculating it. And the area comes out to be, which is uh, 3 and a half times 53.38. So these come from a, a table of 1B. One thing we have to calculate here, because this beam is only braced on the both ends, it's not braced in the middle, if you do like a floor beam, if you do a roof beam, usually you have a plywood or a floor on top of it and you have a bunch of beam next to each other and they can brace each other. But this is all standalone by itself. And then we're going to have an issue of what we call uh, uh, stability, lateral stability. So if you got this beam here and you worry about it, and this kind of do like this, you know, it kind of buckle like that. So we got to count for that and that's why we're going to find that CLD uh, factor. I'm going to bring back this equation back down here. We're going to figure everything out except for the CL part, except for this part right there. And I'm going to come in, in here and say, okay, F prime B, and that is equal. And we said FB came out to be uh, 1,500. So 1,500, if I multiply that by uh, um, all the adjustment factor, which is bunch of one, and everything came out to become one, so one, 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 one. And that still comes out to 1,500 PSI pound per square inch. And then we can say that is still, we don't have the CL. So let me put the CL right here. That's a CL equal. So that's a CL times CL. We have to figure that out. We can usually call this F prime F star C. So that's a C. all this multiplied by that number, except for CL, we can say that's a F star B time CL. Our, based on here, our F star B comes out to uh, 1500. So go into the code book, section 3.3.3. .3 it says you have to worry about the ratio of your unbraced length. This beam is only braced on both ends, so the unbraced length is about 20 feet or 240 inches, if you convert them to inches. And they want that ratio over the, uh, the, uh, the uh, depth of the beam itself. And then you bring that ratio and take them to the code book right here. Let me bring the code book up here. And then when we look at the code book here, we're going to go ahead and figure out where in the code book this will fit. Uh, what this ratio is going to be less than 7 on this column, or is it going to be more than 7? Most likely it's going to be more than 7. And these are for cantilever beam. It's not that, our situation. Our situation is single span beam. If I go down, it's not uniform distributed load. The weight of the beam doesn't count because the timber is pretty light anyway. So it's going to be this third one right here, third row. It says... Uh, the uh, concentrated, come on, move out of the way. Con concentrated load at the center with lateral support at uh, no, we don't have a lateral support center. Uh, actually, it's this one right here. Concentrated load at the center with no lateral support right here. That's the one we're going to use, and we're going to probably use this equation over here to find out what our LE kind of come out to. So our LU over D comes out to be just 20 footer. 20 foot multiplied by 12 meter an inch, 240. That's 15.25. Uh, and that is equal. 
So that comes out to 15.7, which is bigger than 7. And therefore, we're going to use that equation that we talked about, which we said uh, um, Le is equal uh, 1.37 time Lu uh, plus 3D. So we're going to say it became 1.37 time 240 plus 3 time um, 1525. And that comes out to, um, uh, LE comes out to 375. Okay, I want to stand with the same section of the NDS, the next page to this. The, uh, we have to calculate the, uh, the critical buckling, and from there we can use that long equation they have to calculate the CL that we need to calculate. So if I show you, if you go back to the, uh, let me see if I can bring this up again. Go back to the next page, and the next page we're going to see, so we're going to go ahead and calculate RB. After we calculate RB, we're going to calculate the uh, critical buckling FBE, and then we're going to come back and plug everything back into this uh, equation right here, equation 3.36. From there, we can uh, figure things out. Okay, so that become uh, 21.60. And the critical design value is 1.2 time E minimum, that is uh, E prime minimum, and divided by RB squared, which we already have RB calculated. So that comes out to be 1.2 time E prime minimum. We calculated to become 690,000 PSI, and divide that by uh, uh, 21.6 square and that give me uh, OK, so now we use the equation. And if one of the things we do when you do this long equation, first go ahead and figure this value out, F B E divided by F star B. And that, then you plug in the equation, makes it easier. So we did all this work to just figure this thing out, CL, and came out to 0.87. And a lot of time, the designer had done so many of things, they really know all that number by heart. But you really have to go through calculation and figure all that out. So we did that, and then we're going to come back in here, and uh, we're going to figure out this number. And I'm just going to come up here and do it right here. I'm going to say, OK, f of b, f prime b came out to be uh, f star b times cl. f star b came out to 1,500, and 1,500 times 0.876. Uh, and that will give me. Uh, 
1,314 pounds per square inch. Now we have that, this, once we got that number, we can easily figure this out. A lot of time, if you sit in a coffee shop and try to figure out in your head on a piece of uh, napkin, what is the capacity of uh, that beam before going through all these calculations, you are thinking about all these adjustment factors, they all equal one. But if you don't have a stability factor in the, your own head, go ahead as a designer and say, I'm going to use it between 0.8 and 0.9. And you know that the, uh, from the book, the could be southern pine, could be whatever species is, just use that number, multiply by that, and quickly you can come up with that number. And that will give you a rough estimate rather than going through all these uh, calculations. So anyway, let's continue to figure out the beam capacity. Give me a minute. Let me erase all this stuff down here. Okay, so now we have figured out the, uh, the stress capacity of the wood, which came out to be um, 1,314 pounds per square inch. That's the capacity of the wood. And then we know what's, what is the capa moment capacity of it. If you look at the beam, when a beam has a loaded kind of, this is exaggerated, kind of bends like that, and this being a cross-section of it, this is a stress cross-section. On the top, you have a compression. On the bottom, you have a tension. And then in the middle, that's just down the center, what we call neutral axis. So the stress is zero in the middle. At the top, so the highest point of the stress is where right here it is, furthest point away from the center. And that's why this is MC over I. That's a C. But we can also you convert that formula to M divided by section modules. So now we have this. We have this. We're going to figure out this moment, what this moment is going to come out to be. And we said, OK, we have uh, 1314 equal uh, moment divided by S. I thought I had them down here. I do 135.66 and therefore my moment come out to, you basically what you gotta do is make this one, M is equal, this num two number multiplied by each other. And that gonna come out to 1.6. So now this beam, the weight of the beam itself, and the load is hanging off of it, it's going to hang off of it, it's going to cause a moment. And we would just want to know what the uh, load is going to be here. So we've got to deduct the weight of the beam itself, the moment of the beam. And if you look at every book, steel book, timber book, concrete book, every beam, the way they have the loading diagram, uniformly distributed load, the maximum moment for that is basically MMAX, look up on the board, it's going to be WL squared divided by 8. That's if you have like a floor on top of it uh, or, or, or a, a weight of the beam itself because it's a uniformly distributed loaded. So they're going to, but we don't know the uh, W. The W is going to be uh, how much is the weight of the beam pound per foot. I like to know what is that pound per foot. You can go ahead and look at the speed species of wood find out exactly what the density is but normally lumber is about 35 pound per cubic feet so i'm just going to go ahead and use that ap approximate i say okay 35 pound per cubic feet is the weight of the lumber what that is like concrete is 150 pound per cubic feet steel is uh 490 pound per cubic steel per cubic feet so the timber is very light that's why it's so awesome so multiply by the cross-sectional area and the area was uh be careful that's a pound per cubic feet you got to convert that this is the inch. So I'm going to multiply by three and a half the area time uh, 1525. But these are inch. They're not a foot. This is a foot. These are inch. So I'm going to convert these to a foot. Divided by 12. Divided by another 12. So I'm going to divide by 12 times 12 for both of them, which is 144. And that will give me 12.4. Twelve point ninety seven, or I let's call it thirteen pound per foot. So now we have that. We're going to say, okay, that's a thirteen point thirteen pound per foot. Time the length. That's a pound per foot. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, multiply by the length. Length was twenty foot. 
so 20 foot squared, okay? This is a pound per foot. That's a foot squared. If I multiply by 112, it makes it an inch, not by 212, because uh, one of the foot cancel each other out. Do it mathematically. Divide by 8, and that will give me uh, 7,800 inch pound. Now, the maximum moment caused by this using the beam, beam formula, M for constant law is equal uh, PL divided by 4. We don't know the P, but we got to figure this moment out. <coughs> okay, so we're going to come back in here. We're going to say um, our allowable moment we're going to use, it's going to be maximum moment here minus that uh, beam moment. Okay? And uh, maximum moment, we figured it out to be right here, 178,257. And this one came out to be 7,800. Take that out of it. Now we have um, 178,257. Minus 7,800, I got 170,457 inch pound. Okay, then I can go ahead and say, okay, that number, 170,457 inch pound is equal P, which I don't know, L is a 20 foot, but I gotta make it to an inch, make it so they become 240 inch. Divide this by four. And therefore my P comes out to basically all you have to do, uh, take this, divide this by that. So that comes out to uh, uh, 170,457. Divide that by uh, 20 times 12, multiply by uh, 4 because it's going to come back up. So my P comes out to 2840, 2841 pound. So 2800 pound. That's how much it's going to. Uh, the capacity for bending. Now, if you're a carpenter, if you are uh, somebody who don't know anything about engineering, uh, you got your idea and you say, okay, I'm going to use that number, stay about 2,500, 2,600. But if you're an engineer, you want to do a detailed analysis, you're not done at all because you have to uh, check for uh, deflection, see how much that beam is going to deflect, check for shear, it might break under a shear, and also check for capacity. Wood is a amazing thing because wood is a soft, it's not like steel and concrete. So if you have this landing on this something like here, yeah, do I have enough support underneath it? Is this enough? Is this enough? Is two fingers enough? Is four, you know, do I have to make it bigger? And that's where you have to figure out how much support is here. And we're going to go ahead and do that next. Let me erase this stuff. Now we got that and we know our capacity came out that I'm going to write it up here. So P came out to be 2841. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and check for share, and we found out this load came out to be 2841. I'm going to make that to uh, 2841, and therefore my reaction on both sides in here, and in here, it's going to come out half of that. That is 1420. Let's say for good luck, 1421. So basically, V is equal P over divided by 2. Our V is equal uh, 1421 pound. So that's 2800 pound. <coughs> and uh, you learned this years ago. Share equation is equal 3 over 2 times uh, uh, V divided by the area, which in this case will be BD, 
So that's 3 over 2 times 1421 divided by uh, uh, 3 and a half times 12, 15, 25. I, uh, when we went to the table at the beginning, we found out from a uh, table 4A, the FFV came out to 180. Then we said from uh, NDS uh, 4.3.1, FFV prime is equal FFV time a um, bunch of adjustment factors. They were uh, CD, CM, CT, and uh, CI which they all want anyway, so that comes out to 180. And this 180 is way more than 40 pound, so we check, we okay there. We're gonna check the shear. And uh, next we're gonna check for the compression, see if that compression, that support system is enough. And that number we wanted was uh, if uh, compression to perpendicular came out to 625, so F prime, compression to the grain came out to be F compression time uh, CM CMCTCI and again that's from 4.31 and that still comes out to a uh, time marked by a bunch of one so it comes out to 625 pound per square inch But how much force we have on that? We said our total load came out to be on this side. How much force is on that support? It's gonna be 1421. So our P divided by area, our V divided by area, I should say, comes out to 1421. Our area came out to be, uh, it's not this area. It's the area that this rests on, which is the thickness of the beam itself plus what we have here. So this multiplied by this this way. So it was three and a half this way and it was three and a half this way. So that comes in by 3.5 times 3.5. And let's see what that comes out to. So that comes out to 116. And 116 is way smaller than 625 so we okay here too. Next thing we wanna check, if you worry about it, let's check for deflection, how much this gonna deflect this beam. So deflection is equal, going back to the beam formula, the beam formula deflection was um, P, so now after we calculate, we're gonna calculate the deflection. The, the, there's two different deflection. One is deflection due to the just the load itself, which is really the one I care about. And the other one is deflection due to the weight of the beam. The beam is so small, so it's not gonna count. I mean, this is not pre-stressed concrete. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah. So PR cubed L is uh, 20 feet, so I'm 20 by power three, multiplied 12 by power three, and that comes out to 0.47 inch. But if we wanna go ahead and get a deflection of the uh, beam itself due to the weight of the beam, that equation is, um, and if we remember, that came out to 13 pound five time 13 times 20 by power four times 12 by power three. And that because is, uh, <coughs> one four, but this is a pound per four and one of them cancel out, that's why I multiply by that. <coughs> then we have 384, E came out to 1.9, 900,000, 1,900,000, and I came out to be 1034. I think this comes out to 0 0.025 inch, which is, you can't even notice that. So this is how we do the uh, deflection. It's not bad, but you really have to calculate that to find out, make sure you stay within the code. I hope this was useful, and if it was, give me a thumbs up. Thank you and have a great day.